in the last video I did, I was discussing how to find the neighbors for every point within a polygon, uh, internal neighbors. And I had mentioned that there were two major pieces of mathematics that had to be used. One was to be able to take that shape and sort of create an internal border to that shape, moving each vertex by the vertex normals. And the other equation is to be able to find out whether or not two edges are going to intersect. I'm going to start with the edge intersection one first. Uh, this is going to be the math first, and then I'll have a link in the description as to jump forward to the actual programming. Uh, it is good to always know uh, the math first. So first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking to see... Um, Hold on, things are messing up here. There we go, right. So we're looking to use this equation and this equation is going to tell us the orientation of a triangle. And that basically means whether or not the triangle is going to be drawn um, clockwise or no. Sorry are counterclockwise or if the triangle is actually collinear. So that means that if I've got a point here and a point here, and then the next point is here. So our maybe point here, a point here, and then the third point is here, whether or not they're on the same line. And we will be outputting if it is collinear, uh, after we finish this equation, if the answer comes to a zero, then it's collinear. So we're going to output a zero. If we have a clockwise um, number, we're going to get a positive number on our value, and we're going to output a one. And if it is counterclockwise, we'll get a negative number in our value, which means we'll output a two. And we'll use that zero, one, and two to be able to compare different things, uh, which we'll see later. Um, so here are the calculations I've done for a cross two crossing segments. We've got P and Q. I've got all the points for P1 and P2. I've got the points for Q1 and Q2. And we're going to start putting things into our equations. And I need to be able to get three different, sorry, four different um, outcomes. The first one is testing the line of P to a point on Q. So we see here at the top that I will be using on the first equation. Uh, let's get a different color here. On the first equation, we're using, we're looking at P. So A and B in our equation are going to be P1 and P2. And we're comparing them to, so we're taking that and we're comparing it to uh, the point Q1. So this point here, Q1. And once we calculate all of that, putting all the points with their X and Y coordinates, uh, we see that we get a negative number, which I said is a counterclockwise. So if I went, we can see that if I go P1 to P2, which is down here, so P1 to P2 to Q1, back to P1, we see that I had to draw that counterclockwise. Next is, uh, so that means that we're going to output a 2 for counterclockwise. The next time we do the equation, we're testing uh, P1, P2, and Q2. And we can already tell that if I just draw this, that I'm drawing this in a clockwise manner. So we know that the output is going to be, and we see it down here, a positive number, which means that, oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, that was this one here. So we see it's a positive number, which means we output a one. The next one we're going to do is we're going to be analyzing the line of Q to the line 
to points on P. So we're using Q1, Q2, and the first thing is analyzing P1, and the next time is Q1 and Q2, and we're looking at P2. So once again, we can see things by just going Q1 to Q2, and we're doing P1. So if I draw that, that, that I can see I've drawn that clockwise. We can see we get a positive number and we put a one on our output. Um, I can see it's clockwise. Computers can't see, so computers have to calculate. That's what the formula is for. And then the last one of Q1, Q2, and P2. So Q1, Q2, I'm drawing that counterclockwise. We have a negative number as our answer, which means we output a two. Once we have all of these, I'm going to go and look at um, finding out if they intersect. We're going to be using this little piece here, which is asking that if the lines of P, so checking out P, if O1 is not equal to O2, and then we're going to be looking at Q, so we have to also say and uh, O3 is not equal to O4, then it's going to be true um, that the lines are intersecting. And when we replace those numbers that we got before, we've got a 2, and we see it's not equal to 1. So 2 is definitely not equal to 1. That's true. And 1 is not equal to 2. Well, 1 is definitely not equal to 2. That's true. So both these are true. That means this is true. We have an intersecting, um, intersecting segments. What if it doesn't intersect? Let's look at these two lines here. And we've done all the equations before. We can look at these again. So we're looking at the line of P to Q1. Um, so there's P and Q1, and then we're going to do P and Q2, then Q and P1, and Q and P2. So we're looking at this where we see that at the very beginning, um, so if I drew my lines, uh, P1 to P2 to Q1, I've drawn this counterclockwise, I get a negative number. And if I did this with Q2, I'm also going counterclockwise, meaning I also get, so here's my first negative number, and um, this was supposed to be a minus, right? Uh, that's a minus. So I also get a negative number, and so I get these two, a two and a two. Uh, I can continue on if I want, but I don't need to because we know that the final question is, are these two things not equal? And if we continue on, we see that O3 and O4 are drawing in a clockwise manner, and both of those are also equal. So seeing this, we see both that the... O1 and O2 are equal, yeah, are equal, meaning that this statement here is false. So that's the statement that we want to look at, and we see it's false. And we also see this statement is false, meaning the whole thing is false. They do not intersect. Okay. Now there is a little tricky part. So just now we had... Um, twos and we had ones and in this one we had we had twos uh, sorry two and a one and a one and a two but we know that there's a third outcome if it is collinear so if it is collinear then there are two possibilities of collinear one is this where i draw a line Okay, uh, I'll, I'll actually draw two separate ways of looking at it. Um, if I did that, and then I did this. These are collinear. 
that's the second one here is collinear. They're on the same line, just they're not touching. However, this one is also collinear, but they're intersecting, they're touching. So that's why we need to do another version. So we can see that we have this version here where we're going to be using the same equations of, and we're going to be looking at uh, just two parts of it. Because when we look at two parts of it, we are already seeing that, um, where's my brush? Sorry. Right. So we're already seeing that we have um, zeros. So this came out to be zero. Uh, let's get rid of that. No, nope, this one. So that came out to be a zero, which means that O1 is a zero. And this also came out to be a zero, which means O1 is zero. And if we are looking at just the beginning part, we already know that this here is not true. This is false. So we don't even have to bother with the other one because both have to be true for it to be true. As long as one is false, it's going to be false. So we're saying they're not intersecting, but we do know that they are intersecting. So this is where we pass the usual intersection because this is an awkward intersection and we're going to have to add another equation. So the other equation is going to be asking whether or not they are on the same line. So we're going to look at uh, this function here, which says uh, if bx is less than or equal to uh, the maximum between ax and cx, and if bx is greater than or equal to the minimum between ax and cx, and if by is less than or equal to the maximum of uh, ay and cy, and if by is greater than or equal to the minimum of ay and cy. So uh, the first thing we'll look at, we are going to look at p1, q1, and p2. And we can see here, uh, negative 1. So I just filled everything in. So we're seeing, is negative 1 less than or equal to 6? That's true. Is negative 1 greater than or equal to minus 6? That is also true. Um, is negative 1 less than or equal to 6? That's true. And is one negative 1 greater than or equal to negative 6? That's true. All of them are true, which means this is a true intersection. There are, just like we did in the first equations where we had to do four different iterations, because if O1 is 0, or O2 is 0, or maybe O3 is 0, and O4 is 0, um, just to make sure that we have a situation like, like this one, oops, like this one, testing all four iterations will allow us to know if all four of these points are all lined up for this kind of situation. If we test all four points and none of them match to be true, that means that we have this situation, meaning they are collinear, but they're not intersecting. So that is all the math behind doing your intersecting lines. Um, I think I'm going to go on to the next one, and then I will jump to the programming at the end. Rather than do this and then program it, and then do uh, the next one is putting a border. So I'm going to do the math on putting a border. And then rather than doing that and then the programming, I'm just going to do all the programming in one go. Uh, so in the border, here is what we are planning on doing. Or actually, let me sketch this first and do this. Uh, what we're trying to do is um, I want to take this and the normal for this point here is going to be in 
this direction, which is basically cutting the angles in half. So both those will be equal, and we can move that inwards. Uh, you could use trigonometry to find out angles and everything, but uh, that's just too complex. We're going to be doing this. And we're finding a couple of points. Uh, so we're going to have a... We've got these three points, point one, point two, and point three. And I need to find some other points I can work with. I'm just going to call them E1 and E2. And E1 is going to be um, point two minus point one. So point one is the previous point. The point we're looking at is point two. So the previous point, which is point one, um, is point two minus point one. And then we want point three minus point two. So we're kind of going in a from that direction and that direction. So point three, sorry, point three and point, sorry, wrong layer. Right, so it's uh, point two and point one and point three and point two. So we're kind of going backwards, I guess. All right, and what are we doing? So uh, I'm going to take all those points and I'm just going to plug them in. And this is vector mathematics here. So minus 5 and minus 5 minus minus 2 and 7 is going to give us a point of minus 3 and minus 12. Uh, 9 and minus 1 minus minus 5 and minus 5 is going to be 14 and 4. It's just basically do the math on the x's and do the math on the y's. That's how you do vector mathematics. And then we are going to find our normal. So to find the normal is going to be taking the first point that we found. And if I map those points, we are going to find that one is all the way down here and one is all the way up here. So that's for E1 of minus 3 minus 12 and E2 of 14, 4. Uh, right now, it doesn't look like they make any sense. But the second that we go to look for the normal, we're going to be using those. And I'm going to take um, the Y of E1 and negative it. So the Y of E1 is minus 5, which means that becomes a 5. And then the minus 5 which is the x, and put that as the y. So we're kind of swapping the x and the y, and on the x, we're going to make it negative. So we do that for both of um, e1 and e2, and that's going to give us two new points. So let's look at those points there. And now, these points are looking like they might actually be doing something where if I take from this point to that point, oops, if I take from this point to that point, uh, you can kind of start to see that this is a tangent to that, that angle there. Even though like if I extended P1 further up and P2 across, it will touch that and that will make us a nice triangle, which is going to be an uh, equilateral triangle. And so things are looking like they make more sense now. Now we need to normalize these things because um, sure we're finding our, we are finding our normal, uh, we're finding this, the tangent, and in order to normalize everything, we need, sorry, in order to, to actually find the point somewhere here that will create this tangent, um, we're going to first do what's called normalizing, which uh, normalizing in games, we use in games a lot because uh, on your controller, if I am pushing up or right, up is considered a 1, right is considered a 1 in X and in Y. And if I push both up and across, 
I get this point. However, if I'm moving only right, I'm moving at speed of 1. If I'm only moving only up, I'm moving at speed of 1. But this is Pythagoras' theorem will tell us that this will not be 1. It will be something like 1.4 something, something, something. 1.4 something, something, something. So um, you actually move faster in a diagonal. The best thing is looking at a radius. If I did a radius, then this would obviously be 1. So anywhere along this radius, however much, because if I'm using a controller that is a variable controller, um, I want to know that no matter what, I'll still have a movement speed of 1, whether I'm moving more up than, let, than right or more right than up. Anywhere I go, I'm going to have a speed of 1. And so pulling this back to a, a factor of 1 is going to be what a normalized number is. So the points that we're going to be doing, I'm going to be normalizing them. And we are going to find that um, from the points I had, these points here, if I draw back towards the origin on that point, and I draw back towards the origin on that point, and then I kind of do my circle thing around the one. So wherever these points are that that meets up, that's going to be our normalized new point. Once we have our normalized new points, I am then going to add them together because right now we have two points from here to here. And in adding them together, I'm going to get Turn that off. Turn that off. There. So that's my normal point. And if I draw a line from there to there, that's a normal. Uh, it is a normal, but once again, I'm going to do another step where I'm going to normalize it, which puts the point somewhere down here. Once we have that, then I'm going to say that my result of, because that's now at a factor of 1. So the distance between uh, P2 and the normal is 1. And therefore, P2 plus the normal would be moving into that area there. But if I take the normal multiplied by the border width, then that's going to tell me 1 times anything. So if I did 1 times 2, it might be here. If I did 1 times 3, it might be here. Um, if I did 1 times whatever, it might be here. Uh, if I did 1 times um, a, a fraction, so a decimal place, it would be less than 1. And if I use a negative 1, then it means I'm taking my border and I'm pushing my border out in the opposite direction. And that's the last of my Photoshop layers that I have here, which means we are moving on to the programming. So this timestamp will be down in the bottom. All right, let's go to Unity. And I'm just going to create an object, which I'm going to put stuff on. So tester. And the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do the programming on the intersecting lines. And I am going to do, let's just create a script. And let's call this tester. I hate when that happens. Tester. And that should rebuild. All right. So what do we have when we were looking at our intersection? We have So 
them out. Uh, th four points. So a point for line one and points for line two. And we can start off by just creating our four points. So I'm going to say, um, actually, it doesn't really matter. Let's call this P1. Nope. Sorry. Uh, we were using integers. So I'm going to use an int with that P1. Thank you. All right. Now let's do a And I'm going to do my equations down here. All right, first things first is I want to find an equation which is going to, sorry, I want to do a function which will be, let's do as true or false. So it's going to return a bool and the bool is going to be um, it, this is going to be the one that's actually calculating the whether or not they're intersecting. So the first part of it is um, let's call this intersection. All right. And for the intersection, I'm going to need uh, to input some stuff. So Should I do it with ints? I'll just do vector twos. And we're looking at P1. We're looking at vector two. P2. P3. And P4. All right. And I have my first equation, which is going to be this equation. This equation is finding out orientation. And later on, we had to have another equation on figuring out whether or not they are on segment. And I'm going to just separate these off. And um, I'm going to have these separate as separate equations. So I want to do. Um, so our first one, we're returning a 0, a 1, or a 2. Those are ints. So I can say that we can return an int. And I'm going to call this orientation because it's whether it's uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, or it is in coplanar, collinear. So whether it's on the same line. And we're inserting three points. So vector 2. And I'm going to call these. A, B, and C to B to two C All right. And we did have our return zero. I'm just gonna put that in there just to and I'm gonna say return true. Just to stop them from giving errors. Okay, let's put that equation that we found in. Um, we don't know where on our grid things are going to be. We were using some nice whole numbers, but we're not going to be using whole numbers. And I don't know how large or small our polygon is going to be. Uh, so I just want a little extra cushion here. So I'm going to use a double. And so double is double precision over a float. So floats are precise, but floats are not perfect. Um, and we've got our value. And our value is going to be on that equation that we had um, there. So b to the y, uh, sorry, y of b minus a y. So I've got this written on the side. So I'm just going to type it out. So b y minus a y multiplied by C y minus sorry C x minus A x and then we're going to minus B x 
minus ax multiplied by cy, and that's not ay, by. It's trying to give me the code, but it is wrong. All right, so this is what we want. And we're going to say that if the answer to this is a zero, then we're going to return zero. That is going to be collinear. Then we can also say return, and we're going to ask whether or not the value is greater than zero, then I want to return a one or return a two. So if it's greater than zero, we are going uh, clockwise. We're going to return a one. If it's less than zero, we're going to return a two. I could use an if statement, but I just want to make this nice and neat. So that's our orientation. The other one we're going to need is just going to return a true or false. So that's also going to return a bool. And this is whether or not we are on a segment. Uh, let's just return true for now. And that's going to take in three points as well. So vector 2a, vector 2b, vector 2c. All right. And we had the math for that, which was... Do, 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 do. Uh, this one here. So the if b x, if any of that is true, then we return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So let's go and add that in. And that is going to be a an if. And we are looking at a dot x is less than or equal to Oh, sorry, no. Um, what is it? It is b dot x. b dot x is less than or, or equal to, and use math f to find the maximum between our a dot x and our c.x okay so that's our first one so either that um i guess i can do this on the same line i'm just going to copy paste this oops copy paste and then we're also looking to see if the uh, b.x is greater than or equal to the minimum between a dot x and c dot x. And then, so another and, we can take all of this, just drop in another line, doesn't matter. Uh, we're now looking at the y's, so that's a y. That's why we're looking to find out if it's max on that and that, that and that. And if that is so, then obviously return true. And if it's not, then we just return false. All right, so we have our orientation equation. We have our segment equation. Now on the intersection, these are the different parts that we're going to be doing. Um, we were outputting ints for the um, orientations. So I'm going to be putting an int of it's called 01. And we are putting in orientation. And remember, we said that we're doing um, the points on P first and then Q. Oh, what did I do here? Sorry. This is supposed to be Q1 and q2 anyone that was screaming at me back then saying i did it wrong oops sorry so uh so we got our, 
our points on P and our points on Q, which means this also should have been Q1 and Q2. So let's just pass in P1 and P2. And we're going to be analyzing with Q1 first. And that'll give us our answer as O1. And we need four of these. One, two, three, four. And we're doing P1 again. But this time we're doing the Qs. And then I'm going to swap this for the Ps. Okay. Then we ask that question. So remember, normally on a normal intersection, um, I want to know if O1 is not equal to O2 and O3 is not equal to O4. So if that happens, then we can return true. Now, let's just drop that guy in there. If those are false, then it means it's not intersecting. However, when we get zeros that come in, zeros means it's collinear. So now we have to check to see, are we on the same line? So I'm going to check first um, if O1 is equal to zero. And we're looking for true or false as to whether it's on segment. And if that's the case, we're going to return true. And on segment, we are going to be putting in uh, P1, Q1, and P2. So we're going to have like sort of the, um, the other lines piece in the middle. So I want to say P1, Q1, and P2. Um, no. Sorry, P1, P2, Q2. All right, and there are four points, so I have to do four testings of this. And so if any of these is equal to zero, we're going to be checking to find out if it's on a segment and it will be returning true. If none of these turn out to be true, then just return false. It's not the same. It's not intersecting. Um, so the next one is, um, this should have been Q1, then Q2. Then these are the Qs. And these are the Ps, and that should be P1 and P2. Okay, that is our intersection. And we can do a little test, so debug.log. And I'm going to say um, intersection, and I'm passing in P1, P2, Q1, and Q2. Um, my bad. Once again, these points are points in space, which means they're vector two. There, now that works. Okay, we've got our code saved and I'm gonna pull this back up and just so I can see the points, where is it? This guy here, I'm just gonna move this into my other monitor so I can flip back and forth and Let's do our tester where we've got our points. So our first one is an intersecting line.
Come on. There you go. Oops, tester. And let's go to console. Okay, so P1 is minus 3 and 6. P2 is 5 and minus 6. P1, 5 and minus 7, minus 6. So that's from the first part that we did. You can look back in the video and see the graph. And it's telling us false. What did I do wrong? Um, P1. I typed something wrong. O one does not equal two. O three does not equal four. Um, P one, P two, P one, P two, Q one, Q two, Q one, Q two. Ah. So let me just make sure these two, uh, P1, P2, P1, P2, Q1, Q2, Q1, Q2, Q1, Q2, P1, P2. Okay. All right. My bad. And still says false. Let's check. Our equation orientation is supposed to be by minus a y times c x minus b x and then b x minus a x b y minus b y. Okay, so that was my problem there. Save. Third time's a charm. That's what I get for just copying them over. True. Okay. And we knew from our graph before that that was a crossing one. Uh, the next one I'm going to input is the non-crossing lines and that would have been a one and a nine nine uh, p2 is minus nine minus seven two six five minus seven and we run this and i should get a false That's our faults. And now we're going to try with our lines that are coplanar. So we had that as um, 6, 6, minus 6, minus 6, 4, 4, and minus 1, minus 1. For anyone who recognizes, we know that would be a 45 degree angle. And if I run this, I should get a true because one of our on segment places should fault. 6, 6, minus 6, minus 6, 4, 4, minus 1, minus 1. Um, once again, go and check that equation. So. We are looking at looking at B wait, 
hold on, down here. B, 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 B. Right, that's all correct. And this is A's, AX and AY, and C's, CX and CY. And then minimum, so that's max, min. Uh huh. AX and AY and CX and CY. ABC. I mean, to be honest, when I tested all of my stuff out, I never really had anything that was on segment. So I've never seen whether this bug came up before or not, uh, but it was part of the equations I've found and it should have worked. Um, I just want to know what these things are. So let's do It should give me a bunch of zeros. No, no, not plus. Oh, wait. Something's not right there because Those should all have been zeros. So how did I get eight? When we did the math, we got zeros. And this is tell me counterclockwise. So something's again is not right here. Oh, stupid me. If the value is equal to zero, return zero. The value is greater than zero, return that. All right. How did I not see that at the beginning? And zeros and true. Okay, so now that works. Um, okay, so one of the things that to note that with that mistake, did that make the other things false? Well, we know that when we did the math that they return either a one or a two because the math was always either uh, less than zero or greater than zero. The math was never actually zero, which means that this mess up here wouldn't have made a difference anyhow because um, it was, never equal to zero. So this never had to prove true. Right, so these are our equations for finding out whether it's going to intersect. Uh, the next thing I wanna look at is taking a polygon and creating a border on it. So let's add onto this tester, a polygon collider. And let's give it an interesting shape. Uh, 
That's good enough. Okay, so on this shape here, I am going to need to get it into the tester. Let's give ourselves public polygon collider 2D. Just call it poly. And I'm going to need quite a few different things in order to get this to work. Um, okay, I'm going to shut Photoshop down since I don't need that anymore. And just check something in OBS. Okay, so, uh, oh shoot, I did need Photoshop because the other equations in, in there. Um, Photoshop. And let's look at our border stuff. Get rid of that. And start with. start with that all right so we're going to need some sort of new polygon collider or just a new set of points so i'm just going to say public and let's do it in a list and i'm going to say i want um these are going to be vector twos and we'll call this uh Border points. So I want to be able to use them later. It's new list. All right. Review. And let's get started. Uh, let's create. So I will be not outputting anything. So create order. And I want to be able to input the polygon that I'm going to be creating a border on. And we need to know how much we're actually going to be pushing it out. So let's do a, I think that should come up here public float, um, call it border width. For now, let's leave it at zero. And we also need to put in our float border width. Move Photoshop over to the other window. All right, uh, let's store some of our polygons into, uh, let's do an array. So vector two and I can't use the same as that. So let's do, let's just call it points. equals new vector two and that will be actually I should be able to just say poly dot points. There we go. Uh, so I'm taking the points from the polygon and that is when we look inside of here, these are the points that we have. So poly dot points is going to be that. And then I need to do a vector two. And we called it E1 
And we said that was going to be Okay, hold on. I need to find something here. Um, oh, right. Okay, so I'm going to go through all of my points and do the equations on each point. So I'm going to say that, let's do this as a for loop. And we are doing it to the points length. Um, I also need to put these into somewhere. Oh, no, I'm, I'm putting them into border points. Um, so let's do this in our for loop. And our for loop, I remember we did it so that we had the point and we need to find the previous point and the next point. So to find the previous point, um, I can do um, this is where I have to look for, I always forget. Mm -hmm. OBS needs a pause on its recording. Okay, so I can do an equation where I could um, just take whatever the point is. So i is zero, I can take i, and I can minus one. Problem of doing that is that i minus one is gonna be negative one, and that's gonna break our array, because I'm gonna be looking through the list of points for an array, and if I do that, then um, I'm gonna get negative one. So I might want to loop back around to whatever the last point was. And in order to do that, I'd have to test. So I minus the one. And if it's less than zero, then I am going to be doing, um, then my neck, my previous point is going to be the point that is, uh, the last point, which will be the poly points, um, count minus one so that count is going to be the um because count would be since everything starts at zero count will be the maximum amount that you have but because everything starts at zero you have to go back one so it'd be count minus one for that so what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, so I, it'll look like this, sorry, if points, uh, sorry, I can say, uh, vector two, no, um, Uh, let's store it into an int. Int prevent equals i minus one. If prevent is less than zero, then prevent is equal to points dot length minus one. So that gives me. So if, if i is a one, I'll get zero. But if i is zero and I get negative one, this will give me the next one. And also I can say if next int is equal to i plus one, because the actual point is i. The previous point is i minus one, and the next is i plus one. But what if we get to the end? So if Next int is uh, greater than or equal to, will never be greater than, but if it's equal to points dot length, that means that I'm outside of the array, then 
next int is going to be equal to zero because I'm wrapping it right back around. I could do all that. Let's see how we can do it in a smaller way. I'm just going to go directly and grab what I need. So vector two, and I'm going to call it the previous point, and it's going to be equal to the points. And this is where I use that. Or I could say, and I can say vector two, uh, next, oops, next point is equal to points, next thing. All right, that's the easy way to do it. I'm going to do it a little bit more difficult. I wanted my uh, I minus one, and I'm going to add on my points dot length. So if I have five points, that means it's zero, one, two, three, four. That's my five points. So if I'm at the zero point and I minus one, I get negative one plus the length is five. Negative one plus five is four. That takes me to the end. Um, and then just to be certain, um, because once I go to, um, it still works out, but um, I could also just to fully make sure I'm going to do this. So this is called modulus or modulo, and it's finding out the remainder of uh, that being divided by that and not the answer on the division, but what's left over. And that still gives me security in this working. Um, so I can do it again for this, but this time it's going to be I plus one. Uh, and that I'm just going to take that and then actual points dot length. And this should have been in brackets. There we go. All right. So this um, would replace all of that plus two lines. I can take these four lines out and just go with these. So that's my previous point, my next point. And now we're going to look at the other parts of the equation. So there it is. We're finding these E's. So those E's are going to be found with E1, uh, sorry, E1, these are vectors, two because they're points in, in space, and E1 is equal to points I, so the current point minus points, uh, sorry, we already have it, the previous point, and then vector 2, E2, equal to uh, next point minus points i and that gives us our e's now remember that we had to kind of swap the answers on e1 and e2 so we're swapping the x and y and we're going to just put this into a new vector and this will be the the vector that is our normal and so we'll call it normal and that's going to be equal to and we're creating a new vector which is going to be uh, the reverse of the edge one of e1 which is a negative version of e1 y and then we're going to do E1 X. So we're flipping the X and Y. And then this, we're also inverting it in sign. Um, so we take that guy and we had to normalize whatever we got from it. So that remember, let's bring it down to a factor of one. And then we're going to add that to, let's just do it on another line. New vector two, 
and this is where I'm doing minus e2 dot y and e2 dot x dot normalize and oh remove that all right so the addition of both those things gives us our our normal point but then the normal point remember on the graph is far away and we need to bring that also down so i'm going to just say normal dot normalize right and normalize as c makes this vector have a magnitude of one uh, so the x and y will be um, calculated in such a way that the value, the magnitude, will be 1. And once we have a magnitude of 1, 1 times anything is going to be our... Oh, well, if it wants to give that, sure. Um, and no, not this. Um, so 1 times anything is going to be normal times our border width. So if border width was 0 0.5, 1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. Um, if it's 1 times 3, then our border width is 3, then we get a 3. So this is important, but this is as if we're at the origin of 0, 0, but we're not. We are actually at our point. So I need to put in here points i plus whatever that is. The normal position times the border width changes the normal's position, and then we add that to the point that we're looking at. Once we have that, we've got our border points, we can add that to our border points. And that is our creating the border. Um, I want to be able to visualize it, so let's do a void on draw gizmos and only if border points is not equal to null and border points dot count is greater than that. Um, then I'm going to for each It's, for now, I'm just going to draw circles. Um, gizmos dot, let's give it a color. And gizmos dot draw sphere. So where sphere at point P and Zero point one F. Good enough. All right. So here we have our shape uh, on the tester. I have an error scripted. So who did I leave open? You. There we go. And uh, let us, oh, um, we need to call on it actually. So let's do this in update. Update. Poly and border width. And every time we do this, I actually just want to clear. 
I'm going to clear out. So, order points clear. There we go. That should work now. So here's my border points. I don't have any. And there are my points. And I'm getting a whole bunch of errors on 37. What's the error? Outside of bounds array. Hold on. Bobby. Does this, do I have to set this as something before? Like I, it can be zero. Oh, sorry. Uh, wait. No, this is right. If it's not now, and the count is greater than zero. You know what? I'm not going to call it an update. I'm going to call it down here. Maybe there's a discrepancy between the update and... Nope, it's still saying the same thing. Uh, this time on 36, which is this point here. Uh -huh. That should have been like that. Right, so it's the I plus one and then the modulo. And go away. You're not needed. Shoot. No more errors. Right. Uh, and actually, I don't need to run anything because I can just do this. So I can see those points going in and out. And this is totally different to scaling. So if I took this and I just scaled it. Um, scale. And I scale it. You can see that that and that that's not a border scaling is not correct i mean that's even outside so scaling does the wrong thing what you need to do is you need to use that equation which is going to move each of those points in by their um by their normalized normal their normal Okay, so those are the two parts of math that are needed when I am doing my finding the internal neighbors, um, which the reason for those pieces of math that I explained in the first video and in the next video that I'm going to do is actually um, creating the equation for finding, well, the function for finding the neighbors as well as uh, I might tag that on with the actual A star pathfinding um, since it's kind of related. Uh, just need to see how long that will actually go. All right, that is it. And thank you for watching.